episode of Ranger Touring. We're out here at Cave Hill Quarry on our way to Birdsville. What I thought I'd do though is uh, just update you on the modifications that have gone on the vehicle since my last video. If you want to see all the firework um, and everything practically up until about uh, 2021, check out my full walk around video. The link for that uh, is in the description below. But for this, we're going to be taking you through all the things that have up been updated in the last six months or so. So starting up the front, one thing that Rangers have inherently had a problem with is the transmission overheating. So what I've done recently is I've had a uh, transmission cooler installed. So that sits at the front and obviously gets the um, cool air running through uh, while you're driving. So obviously that keeps your automatic transmission um, temperatures a lot lower and uh, slows that variation between high and low, which is excellent. Um, it's really important to have that installed if you're someone who does a lot of uh, tough full driving, putting their car through a lot, or most importantly, if you're towing. So up top, I've had a new Max Trax mount installed. I used to have the Pro Rack Max Trax mounts, which were held on um, by a Velcro strap. They moved around a lot on the top and they'd always vibrate if I was on corrugation. So I went to something a bit uh, simpler. So this is just a, a bracket that sits in um, on the original Rhino rack. And then from there, just some twist off tops um, to unscrew all four tracks. They have to be about a meter apart, obviously to, to fit the gaps. The reason I went these over the twist lock ones it's due to the fact that if your tracks bend or they've got a build up of mud, you actually won't be able to get them back on. So these things are a lot easier to just you know swivel off and uh, get your max tracks off easily. So the next thing I did was get some Razorback seat covers. I've uh, generally stinged out on seat covers and I've been through about three pairs. Um, I got these on sale um, and they are exceptional. So these are the grey canvas um, style ones. So they're completely waterproof, dirt proof, everything like that, which is excellent. So. Um, you can wash these as well, so you've got um, the ability to get the muddy, jump in after you're wet or anything like that, um, and then still keep your seats uh, in good condition. Okay, so the next modification that I've done is an update to the tyres. So I kept the mud terrain tyres for this one and I went the Maxxis Razors MTs. Um, they got really good reviews online. I didn't have any issues with my general grabbers and I got about 35,000 Ks out of them. They weren't completely um, on the bottom of the tread, however, with the big trip coming up, I wanted a new set of tyres. So I got five of these at a reasonable price. Um, they are a pretty heavy, thick mud terrain tyre, um, but again, for the type of driving I do and the conditions I, I drive my car in, I think a mud terrain uh, is a really beneficial tyre for me. I've kept the same size. They're still a 265, 75, 16. I don't want to go any bigger because that really upsets your fuel economy. So an update to the back seat. I've had a 12 volt plug installed in the back. My original quarrel with my original setup was that the 12 volt plug was in the back of the tub. So every time I stopped and I wanted to uh, power the fridge, I had to run the cord out the back of the car and then plug it in. So now this means I can just leave it on and uh, it's pretty set and forget. So the next one is the back seat setup. You probably have seen this in some of my other videos, but I thought I'd just talk it through to you. So um, originally I wanted to um, sort of have a drawer set up, but unfortunately due to the fact that the door opens at a bit of an angle, you can't get a standard size drawer in. Um, and I really wanted to compartmentalize a lot of my stuff so that um, I could have the dog in the back or I could compartmentalize the stuff that sits in the back seat and still have it easy to access. So what I've ended up going for, this is a um, just a bit of plywood uh, with some marine wool over the top, which uh, is cut to fit the back seat. It screws into two um, pre-existing holes, which have um, been pop riveted um, to, to fit a thread through there. Um, on top of that was an, uh, an additional thing that I put together afterwards, which is just a slide out table. So when we're on Fraser Island, it rained a lot and we were trying to cook on the way or cook on the road. Um, and we were putting the tailgate down and cooking off the back of that. But unfortunately, because my awnings are 180, um, it doesn't cover the back. So the design was to have a slide out table, which under a bit of tension, um, just sits here and I can uh, put my gas cooker here. Really good, because obviously the, the door provides a bit of natural uh, wind blockage as well. Then cook on here, um, just sort of have a bit of workspace on this side. This is all completely removable as well. Um, I can run just this component here on the base or I can run uh, both of these as well. It's nice and lightweight. On the other side, I've also got another removable box. Um, again, I can run this without that space and just have this completely open. The reason I like this is because we can put our bags on here, we can put the dog up here um, and have all that uh, space to use, but also be able to get my filming gear out from underneath. I'm constantly going to this stuff when we um, put videos together. So this is something I really needed easy access for. So we've actually just come back from the trip and I realized I forgot to 
to put this one in there. So this is actually a water tank. I bought this off eBay. And there is a company that makes them specific for the dual cabs. Um, and in this case, it's a 25 litre tank, but for some brands of Utes, it goes up to 30 litres. It sits up above the spare tire, so it doesn't use any space or anything like that. It uh, works perfectly. And you fill it up using a, a hose, um, and then just open the valve, and you've got uh, 25 litres of clean water. Um, we normally drink out of this water. Um, it's incredibly good. It doesn't taste like you don't get that plasticky taste like you do in some water tanks. But yeah, it's, it's actually been a really good modification. Completely DIY, takes about maybe half an hour to install completely, um, but very simple. And any guy with a basic amount of tools would be able to do it.